Okay, so today we're going to talk about the DA20 fuel system. Start off, we have the fuel system completed or completely drawn in the middle, and then off to the right, we have the schematic that's laid out in the Diamond DA20 airplane flying manual. Some things to note on how the manual draws the schematic is the fuel tank is a really tiny cylinder, which just isn't very representative of the tank itself, considering it is the largest portion of the fuel system. Um, the instrument panel mounted fuel shutoff, uh, which is just a dotted rectangle right in the middle of the schematic, is not very accurate either. Um, that's the fuel shutoff valve, the emergency fuel shutoff valve that I just draw in the schematic, but is also inside the airplane. Um, just to the right of the parking brake there that I have highlighted there. Um, the return lines, there are a few return lines in the system and it's very, very, very difficult to kind of tell where the turn li return lines go and what line flows in what direction. So we really try to simplify that down as well. So anyways, the DA20 fuel system um, has a total capacity of 24.5 gallons of av gas. 24 of that is usable, so there's approximately half gallon left inside the system. And then there's approximately six pounds per one gallon of av gas as well. So when you're calculating weight and balance and performance, that's something that you need to take into consideration based on how much fuel you're taking. Okay, starting out with the DA20 fuel system, uh, we're going to start out the basics of the drawing of the system. So I am making this red shaded area for this presentation only. You don't have to draw this red shaded area, but it, um, it'll help explain the different components of the system and where they're located. Next, we're going to draw the fuel tank. Just draw a big square rectangle right at the middle portion bottom of your whiteboard. And then we're going to draw the last portion of the fuel system. So we have the fuel, the fuel tank, which is the first portion of the system, and then the last portion of the system is right before it gets combusted. That's the distribution manifold. Okay, so just draw a big black square there, and then draw a couple lines going off the corners of the square. These lines are going to be representative of each cylinder or the uh, injector lines that go to each cylinder inside the engine for combustion. Okay, working backwards now, we have the fuel control unit, which is going to be just behind the, um, the injector manifold or the distribution manifold in terms of the um, order at which the fuel gets to the engine. Behind this, we're going to have the fuel filter. I'm drawing it from last to first, basically, from last component to first component. But this will make sense in a little bit. So now we're gonna draw the engine-driven fuel pump. Uh, I just draw two circles. You can think of the circles are spinning and they're creating increased pressure on the fuel line, um, pushing the fuel to the engine. And then we're going to put in the electric driven fuel pump. Now this red area that we have shaded is the area that is aft of the firewall. Basically this red area is the area that is um, where we are sitting in the cockpit. So right below us um, in the fuel system. Okay so anything that's above the red area or forward of the red area is going to be after the fire or before the firewall in front of the firewall and in the engine compartment. So the engine driven fuel pump is self-explanatory um, up here why it would be in the engine <laughs> compartment. The electric driven fuel pump is in the back underneath us and I know that because you can hear the electric driven fuel pump when you turn the fuel pump uh, uh, switch and fuel prime switch on to start the aircraft before you start it. Um, if you have both switches on, it makes a very high sounding electrical noise just below us.
Next, we're going to add the fuel bowl, or what's called a gas glider. The fuel bowl basically collects sediment in it in the, outside the tank and basically prevents that sediment from getting through the line. It almost works similar to the fuel filter. I just draw a rectangle and it's going to be just to the left of the fuel tank and then I just add a little end to it, a little funnel to it. Okay, now below the fuel bowl is the sump that connects to that fuel bowl. So you're going to put in a little sump. The idea is, is that if you were to push up on that sump, that fuel would come out of it, just like you do when you sump the tanks um, prior to flight, or sump the tank prior to flight. Okay, and you have two sumps. So we're putting one on the fuel bowl, and then we're putting one on the fuel tank. Exact same thing's happening. We also have a fuel vent that's in line with the root of the left wing on the DA-20. So the fuel vent is attached to the tank, uh, it's attached to the fuel system right there. So I just put it on the tank right there, just like that. Um, okay, so now this is gonna be the emergency fuel shutoff valve. It's just above the electric driven pump. And is the last thing before the firewall okay so what i mean is that when fuel comes out of the fuel tank it goes to the gas glider then to the electric driven pump and then to the fuel shutoff valve okay after that the top of this red shaded area is going to be our firewall okay so once it basically passes the fuel shutoff valve to going to the engine, it's passing the firewall as well. Okay, so these red dashed lines are what is what I'm using to represent where the firewall is located. And it's really important that you do this, um, that you draw these red dashed lines, okay? Because um, on your check ride, you may get asked where some of these components are located. Okay, and if you can describe that the firewall is the division point between what is aft and what is in front or in the engine compartment, that's going to help you out a lot. And it's also going to help break down things um, within the system, where they're located to you and how to draw the schematic. It's a lot easier to remember what's before and after the firewall than trying to remember all this in order. So with that being said, here's typically how I like to draw the fuel system. Again, I start with the tank and I start with the in distribution manifolds, my first two components, because it's the first and last thing. What I would suggest doing then is adding the firewall after that and then the fuel shutoff valve, okay? Because those go together and it's about halfway point in the fuel system, okay? Now, everything that is above the firewall is going to be on the engine-driven side or on the engine side. And everything that's below the firewall is gonna be on the cockpit side, or okay, so at the aft side. This can also be true if you look at things from left to right. Anything that is on to the left of the distribution manifold and then the tank is below the cockpit. And anything that is to the right of the distribution manifold and the fuel tank is inside the engine compartment. So those are the two ways that I use to break this stuff down. From there, you know the pumps, where they're located, and then you just have to remember that, oh, there's two drains, so I know that there has to be a gas glider over here, and then I have to remember these two components up here, the fuel control unit and the fuel filter, okay? So when we break this down, it doesn't become, it's not that difficult um, as far as how to remember how to draw it. So now we're gonna start labeling a few things and we're gonna add in a couple of gauges first to help our labeling. So I just draw some dotted lines off the ends of our tank in our distribution manifold to these gauges. Now we have two fuel system gauges. We have a fuel pressure gauge and the fuel quantity gauge. Well, it's pretty self-explanatory where both of those go. The fuel quantity gauge is going to be in the tank because we need to know how much quantity of fuel that we have left available to us. 
and the fuel pressure gauge is going to be closest to combustion because you need to know how great the fuel pressure is before it gets combusted. You don't need to know how great the fuel pressure is as it comes out of the tank because it's not even getting the pressure it might get when it's getting to the electric driven pump or electric pump or the engine driven pump. So last thing that we're going to do here before we start adding lines, uh, fuel lines, is just put in a fuel cap. Okay. So now we're going to draw out the fuel lines. Okay. I'm using the big, uh, uh, thick black line right here to depict the line. So it's coming out of the tank, going to the gas glider. From the gas glider, it's going to the electric driven pump and then up through the fuel shutoff valve comes up through the fuel shutoff valve. Now, the way that you draw the lines going through the engine driven pump is really important, okay? So start off by drawing a line coming from the middle of the two circles to the fuel filter. Then you're going to add a line to the lower circle back to just in front of the firewall. Then you're going to add, uh, just can continue from there all the way around from the fuel filter now to the fuel control unit and then the fuel control unit to the distribution manifold. Now the last thing that we have to do as far as our lines are concerned are is add our return line. Okay, and the return line is the line that allows excess fuel uh, that's from the distribution manifold to return to the fuel tank. And it also allows any trapped fuel vapor within the system to return to the tank as well. But in order to do this, it needs a vacuum or suction of some kind in order to direct it back towards the tank. So the way that they do this or design this is the excess of pressure that's given off by the engine driven fuel pump directs that uh, fuel back towards the tank. So what you're going to do is you're going to start out with drawing a straight line from the distribution manifold to the tank and then from there you're going to put in a little return line from the top circle of the engine driven pump to the the straight line that you just drew okay now we're just going to add arrows for to better depict the direction of the flow Okay, so as you can see right here, we have fuel coming out of the tank, going through the gas glider, going through the electric driven pump, going to the uh, emergency fuel shutoff, in front of it goes through the firewall, and then now it's getting pumped by the engine driven pump through the fuel filter, and then through the fuel control unit to the distribution manifold. There is excessive fuel pressure that's produced by the engine driven pump, this excessive fuel pressure is basically pushed backwards into this return line, and this return line uh, is has a suction from the excessive pressure that go drags it back towards the tank. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we're just going to start labeling our stuff. So I'm going to start out with the fuel pressure gauge going down there, injector manif distribution manifold, fuel control unit, fuel filter, engine driven pump, emergency fuel shutoff electric driven pump, fuel bowl gas collator, fuel tank, fuel tank drain sump, fuel system vent, fuel quantity gauge, and I'm just adjusting these around. Okay, so that's pretty much it. A couple things to note here. Um, make sure that you are not forgetting these sumps or the drains. Make sure that you remember where the Emergency fuel shutoff valve is located. Remember, that's the last thing that's after the or that's aft of the firewall. Um, talking about the fuel control unit, the fuel control unit is the one that meters the fuel. Okay, the distribution manifold just divides the fuel into fourths, basically to each cylinder. Okay, so remember the two roles that they serve: injector distribution manifold divides. Fuel control unit is the thing that meters the fuel to the engine. Okay, other than that, that's pretty much it for the DA20 fuel system.